This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, in this video I'll be demonstrating the use of horizontal chop technique uh, while dealing with a free floating nucleus in eye with hypermature morgagnin cataract. She is an 85 year old lady who has a spheculitic glaucoma. She is on anti-glaucoma medications and anti-inflammatories. Pre-operative IV mannitol has been given and she is taken for surgery. Surgery is being done under posterior subtenous anesthesia. As the initial steps are being performed, I am just trying to highlight some of the challenges which I am anticipating in this case. The visibility is going to be an issue because the corneal edema is still there. The fluid cortex is going to come out as soon as I puncture the anti-capsule, hampering the visibility. And the zonular health will be known only when I puncture the anti-capsule and I will be doing the rexis. So zonular health issues is another concern for me. The chamber is inflated with dispersive OVD after staining of the anterior capsule. I am going to perform intentionally a sclerocorneal incision. I am making a scleral groove and then through it I am creating a small sclerocorneal tunnel before entering into the anterior chamber. The idea is I would like to use the same incision to perform a scleral tunnel. If at all there is a need to express the nucleus out manually. Using a 26G needle the anterior capsule is punctured and as expected the fluid cortex gushes out. Gentle irrigation with BSS helps to wash out all the liquid cortex, which in terms helps to see clearly. Dispersive OVD is again replenished into the antechamber above the level of the anterior flap. Time to perform the rexus. Using a rexus forceps, I'm holding the flap and then creating a rexus of appropriate size. As I'm performing the rexis, I'm happy to realize that the zonular health is very good. So I'm not seeing any wrinkling of the anterior capsule and the tearing is quite controlled. I'm aiming to for a 5mm rexis. I think the rexis is slightly smaller, it's about 4.5mm I guess. Since the nucleus is going to be smaller, I don't expect this small rexis to be an issue. Let's see how things turn out. HPMC is injected under the dispersive OVD before beginning the fake emulsification. Since this is a free floating nucleus and these hypermature small nucleus also will be slightly denser and for this case I have specifically chosen to perform a horizontal chop technique. I am using a long horizontal chopper. The tip is buried into the substance of the nucleus and it is lifted up as the blunt chopper is introduced around the equator of the nucleus. I am consciously lifting up the nucleus so that the chopper doesn't come in contact with the posterior capsule which is expected to be extremely thin and friable. And once the scoring is done, again I am very gentle and not aggressive, I am not so keen to achieve complete separation at the first stroke itself. The nucleus is being rotated using the bi-manual technique wherein the phaco tip and the chopper both are moving the nucleus around. This maneuver is going to be less stressful on the bag and the zonules. The tip is buried inside the second heminucleus and it is lifted up and then the horizontal chopper is introduced around the equator of the nucleus and then the scoring is done. The eye is extremely deep set so there is a lot of pulling of fluid which is being actively sucked off by my assistant. The chopping is continued until we have four fragments. I thought these fragments are reasonably sized so that I can begin emulsifying them. But some of these fragments are still attached to each other and as I am beginning to emulsify, the fragment movement is something very suspicious for me. It doesn't look very natural so I am worried that is there any underlying PC tear? So I stop my emulsification process. I come out. I'm going to inject a dispersive OVD under the fragments into the capsular bag and push these fragments aside so that I can get a better visibility. I just won't rule out any posterior capsular tear at this stage. After closely observing, I'm certain that there is uh, no evidence of any posterior capsular tear. So I go back to emulsifying this nucleus. 
I'm consciously emulsifying these fragments in the antechamber and to prevent the endothelial damage I've coated with copious amount of OVD just to protect the cornea. There are certain situations like these where the capsular bag is very flimsy and these are situations where I would recommend an anterior plane of emulsification. These are all compromised capsular bags so I don't want to exert any stress on them. So these are the few rare exceptions where I would be uh, using an anterior plane of emulsification and to protect the endothelium of course the ovary is being constantly replenished and now I have the uh, second heminucleus remaining to which is to be emulsified. The nucleus fragment is literally suspended in between uh, the OVD. We have put enough OVD in front of it and also behind it in the capsular bag. Uh, slowly and steadily uh, the remaining fragments are gently emulsified. I think even in most of these complex cases, if you are ready to be a little bit more patient and slow down the surgery, I think most of this can be performed quite safely in a very controlled manner. The last fragment is emulsified uneventfully. The cortex aspiration is being done using the bimanual INDA and thankfully the zonules look to be very healthy. So I have abandoned the idea of putting any CTR into the eye. Once the cortex is aspirated all around, the bag is inflated with OVD and a single piece hydrophobic lens is implanted into the eye. The OVD both in front and behind the lens is irrigated out. The rexus is slightly smaller, it's around 4.5 mm. I think it should be alright, so I have decided not to try any extension of the rexus margin. The side ports and the main incision are hydrated, that's it, the case is done. Uh, these are the first day pictures. The patient is doing pretty well, the intraocular pressure is normal. That's it, thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.